You want to preview your holiday light show directly out of Falcon Player? Well, FPP6 has brought in a couple really cool new features, one of which are virtual displays where we can actually preview our light show through the FPP web browser interface or even a separate TV or monitor. Today, I'm going to be enabling virtual displays in FPP. There are a few steps to make this happen, so I'm going to hop right into this. Here I am in X Lights. I went up to Tools and went down to FPP Connect. I got all my controllers configured. I got my layout done already. So we're kind of at this next step here of uploading them to our master controller or whichever controller is going to be running the virtual display. For the virtual display to run properly, Falcon Player does need to have the full FSEQ version of the sequence or the V2 version of it. Under the sequence type that it's going to upload, I'm going to make sure to select V2. And then I also need to upload all the models as well. For that controller, I'm gonna select all under models. You can use test mode through FPP to do this. If you have sequences ready to go, you can use them as well. I'm gonna upload a sequence here just to show this off and let you see what it does. So I got all that set. I'm gonna click the upload button here and that's gonna upload these configurations out to the controllers. Awesome, those are done, and now it's time to hop back into FPP. Here I am in my master controller. I need to go under the input output menu, and I wanna to go to the outputs page. Once we're in there, we're gonna to wanna to click on the other tab, and then we'll have a green add button in the upper right hand corner. This will give us a new line option with a drop down where we can pick what type of other item we're wanting to work with. We can either enable a virtual display or an HTTP virtual display. The main difference between the two display types is the HTTP virtual display can be played directly inside of FPP through the browser, where the standard virtual display actually requires your controller to output through HDMI and will play on a TV monitor. Heck, you could even do a projector. Let's work on the HTTP virtual display right now. Reading across the settings here, we essentially max out all the channels because we want it to display whatever channels it knows about. We have a width and height size here and then a pixel size. Changing the width and height won't actually change the viewing window inside of FPP. However, it will actually change the resolution of the display inside of that viewing window. This is where you can play with the pixel size or the resolution of it to better suit your display's needs. I find the default works just fine. I'm gonna click save. It's gonna ask me to restart FPPD real quick. I'm gonna get that done. Quick refresh of the page by pressing F5. Now that we have a HTTP virtual display enabled, if we go under the status control menu, and we're gonna have a new option called virtual display. Clicking on that brings us to a page that we've never seen before. And there's a big black viewing window here, and that's actually where we're gonna see our display run. To get something running, I'm gonna go down to the run FPP command button down in the footer here, and we're just gonna get a quick test going. When I click the button, it gives me a command prompt, and I'm gonna to go to the drop down next to command and look for test start. This gives a few options, very similar to the traditional FPP testing page. I'm just gonna go with the default. Click run and close, and boom, here's my display in test mode. That's cool, so now let's say I wanna play a sequence. I'm gonna go back to run FPP command in the footer here, and I'm gonna go to test stop. And this time I'm just gonna click run because I don't want this window to close, and that's gonna stop the test for me. Cool, now that that test stopped, I'm gonna go back up to the command dropdown again. I wanna find start playlist. This will actually let me pick individual sequences as well if you don't have any playlists set up, or you could play a playlist from here. I'm gonna select a sequence quick to play, and we'll click run and close. So now we can see that's playing. It's actually doing the audio output as well. If you started this through your main status page, this would be running at the same time. So that is basically the HTTP virtual display in a nutshell. But if we wanna play this on a TV or monitor, it's as simple as hopping back to the outputs page, clicking on the other tab. I'm gonna disable the HTTP virtual display and enable the standard virtual display. Real quick, with a standard virtual display, you either A, need an HDMI device already connected, to your Raspberry Pi or your FPP controller, or you can go into the FPP settings 
which is under status control, FPP settings, go over to the system tab and then look for force HDMI display, check that box and it will let you actually create the virtual display. Without that box check, you might get an error saying something about no pixel overlay models or no frame buffer devices. Well, the frame buffer device is the HDMI output. Just make sure to do that first or else it won't let you actually create a virtual display in your other outputs. The standard virtual display gives a couple extra options for model. We're gonna leave that at auto create. Pixel size of two sounds just wonderful. I find the default settings usually work pretty great on these. For a device, that is gonna be the HDMI port that your controller is gonna to output to. Most Pis, you're only gonna have a single one FB0 more than likely. But if you have a Pi 4, you actually have two outputs and you're gonna have an FB0, FB1. Just make sure that you pick the right one for the display that you're hooking up. For sizes, you can adjust that if you want. Once again, I find the default settings to work pretty well. Once again, it's not gonna change the size of the display, more so the resolution and processing power that it needs to draw that actual display onto your monitor. Most Pis should be able to handle the 1920 by 1080, but if you're using something like a Pi Zero, in my experience, you might wanna change that, drop it down to something like 320 by 180. That will help minimize the overall processing power that is required to draw the display onto your monitor. We're gonna click save, and before I restart FPP, I actually need to check a couple other settings quick to make sure that this is actually gonna to output to an HDMI. Under the status control menu, I'm gonna click on FPP settings, and then I'm gonna to go to the audio video tab. I wanna find the default video output device, and if it's not already set to HDMI, I wanna make sure that the output device is set to HDMI. Now I'm gonna restart FPPD. I'm gonna hop back into the main status page by clicking on the FPP logo in the upper left corner. Let's start a sequence and check to see if it's playing on the monitor. Overall, virtual displays are a great way to kind of double check what you saw in x lights matches what you're gonna get out of Falcon Player. Personally, I will probably just disable these on my actual show controllers. I don't want the added overhead on the processor pumping out these virtual displays. So this is where things get really cool. I can actually use another FPP controller, another Raspberry Pi, in remote mode to sync with my master and the rest of my show. And that way I can connect this controller off to another TV or use the HTTP virtual display option and be able to connect into it and kind of see what my show looks like at any given point. Setting that up, kind of the same steps. You're gonna to wanna to go into x Lights, FPP Connect, upload the V2 format of the sequence along with all models to that remote. And since FPP Connect will actually look for all Falcon Player instances on your network, you don't even need to set up this controller in the Controllers tab within x Lights. FPP Connect will let you upload to it. Here I am in my remote Pi that's running FPP, and I'm gonna go down to the footer and click player and switch that over to remote. I'm gonna go to the input output menu, go down to outputs. I'm gonna click on the other tab once again. We're gonna add, and then from the drop down, we can either select a HTTP virtual display or regular virtual display. We're gonna save that, restart FPPD. Now we need to hop back to our master. At this point, if I play a sequence on my master, my remote that's hooked up to a display, or I can log into it to get the virtual display, all ready to go and just on standby. If you learned something today, give the video a like, make sure you subscribe for more quick FPP tips and tricks.